Hey everybody, hope you're doing good today. Neil the Knife Guy here. Going to be taking apart this Benchmade 710. Um, haven't had this fully apart ever since I got it, and I have carried it quite often, um, using it at work and in my daily life. Um, at work, I tend to... I have a damaged section at work in the fridge and freezer, and uh, with that, there's a lot of uh, spoiled food that I have to get rid of, so I cut open the packages, a lot of broken milk bags and cartons, and all sorts of grime and gunk could have gotten in this. I like to take apart, fully take apart my knives at least once a year, uh, just to get any sort of lingering bacteria out of them, because I do use these for food prep also. So just going to get at it here because this is going to be probably a lengthy process. Benchmades tend to be a little bit more of a pain to take apart and put back together. Can't be done. Um, I've done it several times with my Striker and uh, just recently with the 940 here. And once I got this thing back together, it is very smooth, more so than when I actually got it. So the pivot on this guy is a T10. And then for the body screws, since my Torx bit set is not the greatest, it's a T7. Um, if you have a Weehaw set, it's going to be, for the body screws, a T6. It's one of the differences between a good quality set of tools and a sort of junky set like I have. Uh, been wanting to get a uh, set of Weehaw Torx bits because they are probably one of the best in the world. And anybody who I've ever heard who owns those um, sort of swears by them. So that's the front scale there. You can see with this, this knife, the uh, screws are super long. They just screw into the opposite side and uh, they do have these sort of bolts in the opposite side here to receive the screws. So right away I'm going to end up pushing this pivot out. Just going to pull back the uh, access lock and push that pivot through. And going to slide this blade out. So the washers came out with it. One of the reasons why I really love this knife and why it is so smooth is these actual washers. You see how large these are. Quite thick and quite large in diameter here. Just gonna wipe this blade off. Wipe the uh, sort of travel path of that access lock. Uh, once you take apart one of these knives, you could actually get into a lot of different crevices that you wouldn't be able to get to if you just take the blade out like a lot of people do just to uh, clean the pivot area. And then on the back side here, don't, yeah, I'm gonna have to take off the pocket clip too. Swat out the uh, original pocket clip with one of these deep carry clips and uh, really like these deep carry clips for the retention they have in pocket and also the uh, the way they actually carry in the pocket. It seems like if I'm going to have a deep carry pocket clip, I really like Benchmade's. Um, don't know what it is about them. They usually leave a little bit sticking up, which makes it easier to grab onto. Let's see that scale comes apart. Uh, just shimmy out this backspacer here. Actually I won't be able to. You can see here there's a tab on each side where that backspacer sits into. So next up would be taking the Omega Springs out of the liners. And then, uh, huh, that's quite interesting. I 
I don't think I've seen this before. Usually in an access, access lock, Jesus, I can't even speak, access lock knife, there's a little section here where you could actually slide this bar out. So you could actually take that whole thing off. I'm not seeing how I would do that with this. It's just sort of a slot. So they must put this together like it is now and then sort of rivet that together. But you can see the grime on there, Jesus. I'm just gonna take this off camera, give it a good wipe down then. Uh, I think this is as far as I'm gonna be able to get it. Just getting like, pushing this forward here and uh, swabbing all that area. You can see where it sort of burnished itself. And that's the break in with uh, bench maids when they have the access lock. When you first get them, they're a little bit gritty uh, just because this part's sliding over metal. But once it breaks in, you can see the shiny portion, I believe. Just around the edge here. It sort of burnishes it down and uh, once that happens, it makes it really smooth. Quite actually surprised that uh, you can't get this access bar out of there. I don't see a way. If you guys know a way to get it out of the uh, 710 here, just let me know in the comments below. But. I'm not seeing how that would be possible. So instead, I'm going to have to just sort of wedge a piece of paper towel in there and sort of wipe it out that way, I guess. Get the uh, stop pin, which this knife has a pretty large diameter stop pin also. And then I am going to want to get down in there and get the access bar wiped off also. I think as per usual, I'm going to end up using a toothpick from a Victorinox. Such a useful little, little thing this is. Use it constantly for cleaning out knives. Um, use it pretty exclusively to clean out most of my uh, Swiss Army knives. Just helps you wrap your uh, piece of paper towel around that it's a soft piece of plastic so you're not going to harm anything it just makes makes life really easy using that like this you can see it gets bent out of shape but I have a uh, surplus of these squirreled away in uh, one of my little knife kits don't see any rust don't see really any grime that's uh, to cause any concern. So I guess now I'm just going to sort of wiggle these things back into their homes. Where'd that little toothpick go? There it is. The Omega Springs on this knife seem a little bit more robust than on the 940 I just took apart. Uh, didn't do a video of that. Posted some pictures on Instagram. My hands aren't wanting to cooperate today. There you go. So you just want to get those back in the hole there. And these are definitely beefier than the 710. Or beefier than the 940, I should say. Don't want to break these either. I, uh, my striker uh, has a broken Omega spring right now. Still waiting to send that back to... Uh, <clears throat> bench made for them to fix really should get on that because I really do want to carry that knife <laughs> so once that's done I guess the next step is just uh, wiping down these scales 
I'm not going to put any sort of oil on the knife. Um, not on the parts that I don't need to. I don't like having excess oil in my knives. Just to attracts dirt and grime that you don't really want in your knife. So, less is more usually. I'm gonna put that side on. Just gonna put the other side, lay it down on top type thing, and assemble the handle without any of the uh, blade or washers inside. It's the only real way that I've found that you could put these knives back together. Just trying to line up the uh, back spacer here. That should be good there. Just feed these screws in. That's one. That's two. Everything, everything seems lined up. These screws aren't catching. There we go. Just going to leave these sort of finger tight for now. Just until I feel a little bit of resistance. Give everything a look. Make sure that backspacer is sitting flush. So that's good to go. Um, maybe wipe down these washers a little bit. They don't seem too dirty. I've taken the blade out of this before. Just never sort of disassembled the handle. As per usual, just going to use some 3-in-1 oil. Gonna put some on, uh, holy crap, that's way too much, but I'll use it. Let's get it all over the washer there. And then just plop it onto the blade here. Sort of lining it up. I'm just gonna set that down for now. Take our pivot, also gonna wipe that off. Be surprised how much that has to do with the knife's action if you got grime and gunk on the pivot itself. This one seems to be adequately dirty. See the cloth there. Just gonna start to feed the uh, pivot back in. There is a flat portion on this, so you want to line that up. It's not wanting to go. There it is. And you just want it so it's just flush with the liner. Get this in focus for you. Just flush with the liner so you can slide that blade in. And then this is where you sort of need three different hands. I'm going to pull back the access lock bar with my thumb. Going to take my index finger and put it on that pivot. And just going to slide this blade in. I think I just knocked the washer out of alignment. I'm going to do this a different way actually. I'm going to take the washer first and just put it in the handle. Get that sort of seated on the actual pivot itself first. Go in through the top here. 
push that. Just like that. And then I'm gonna actually put the blade in. I'm just making sure the blade tang has enough oil on it. I think it does. Don't need much. Like I already said, less is more. Pull back that access bar and just push your pivot in a little bit until you can't pull that blade out. Let the access bar go again. Take your other washer. Just drop it on the blade like that. Take my trusty toothpick here. And then once again, just take the pressure off that lock bar with your thumb. And, so, and just push that washer back into the handle. You're gonna wanna make sure that that pivot is down far enough so you can actually get that washer seated in the right position. Once you start seeing that hole in the washer, you could just take your plastic toothpick, which isn't going to harm anything, and just line it up. You can see it's got to go over a little more, and then just push your pivot through. Grab your pivot screw, switch out the... Uh, torque spit on my bit handle just do it so it's snug I'm gonna close the knife now check for centering this knife always did favor the left hand side of your screen um, not sure if it's that or if it's the grind of the swedge, but you can see the tip centered in the handle. Give it a few flicks. And then uh, tighten up the rest of the handle screws. Snug them up. Don't want to over tighten screws. I see a lot of people putting a lot of force into these little, little Torx heads and uh, they're genuinely surprised when they strip a head out. There's not much metal there to grab onto, so less pressure is more. You just want them tight. You don't want to have to struggle to undo them. Um, not using Loctite on this either. I tend not to if I don't have to. If I don't have a problem with the screws backing out just through regular use, then I'm not going to Loctite them down. Uh, the pivot on this, the threads on the pivot are actually pretty well done, so I've never had this knife loosen up to where there is blade play after I uh, reassembled it. Snug these down. Flick it a couple times, just going to raise the camera. Just wipe this oil off, just from where I put the uh, washer on the blade to slide it in.
No blade play whatsoever. And nice and smooth. So that's it for this video, guys. Uh, 20 minutes in. Um, that's pretty much how you take apart a Benchmade knife. 